Horizon Zero Dawn are three completely unconnected words with no collective meaning whatsoever. It also happens to be the name of a fantastic game though. Steven, what are you doing? You don't do game reviews? Get back to Xenoverse! Well, commenter, just bear with me. I had been following the development of this game pretty much since the release of another collection of random words, Killzone Shadow Fall. Back then, Guerrilla Games made the announcement that it was working on an original IP outside of their ongoing Killzone series. Now, I'm a fairly big fan of those games. Matter of fact, I consider Killzone 2 one of my top games of all time. But a major part of their appeal, to me anyway, is their aesthetic, the designs, the worlds, the ideas they have. So, with this in mind, the announcement of a new IP was both exciting and a little bit worrying. On the one hand, I wanted to see more of what these developers could do. But on the other hand, Shadowfall wasn't all that strong a game. But of course, when the first snippets of information started coming out, well, I don't think anyone could have seen robot dinosaurs coming. So. Here we are a month or so since release, and after holding my breath until I could see firsthand whether this game was something fresh or just a gamble on a single surreal concept, well you can just imagine how relieved I was to find not only was it a good game, it's one of the best games I've played in a good long while. Which is why, if you're in any way familiar with my content, I'm breaking my usual mould and doing a standalone video on this game. I'm just compelled to talk about it. It deserves more than a 5 minute summary 10 months from now in a top 10 video. But even so, if you're worried about spoilers, don't worry, I'm leaving them to the end and I'm going to give warning before I start doing anything spoilery. So let's get on. So just to begin, I want to clarify that I'm not trying to say this is the best game since E.T. the Extraterrestrial. There are plenty of others I've enjoyed as much or more in recent years that are fun, that are technical masterpieces even. But in Horizon, this was a case of a game striking me on an emotional level that I can't recall happening since... Bioshock Infinite, maybe? Or before then, Mass Effect, a game which Horizon shares more than a few things with, by the way, but we'll get into that later. Taking place in the far future of our world, some unknown event has caused human civilization to collapse, and in the long centuries since, nature has taken over, while humanity lives on in primitive tribal societies. Living, for lack of a better term, alongside them, however, are the machines. Robotic, animal-like constructs that now roam the planet, composing an entire mechanized ecosystem of their own. In a tagline, Zero Dawn is an open world RPG, akin to games like Shadow of Mordor, Dragon Age Inquisition, and every game Ubisoft makes nowadays. Now that itself might put off people, because if you're like me, sandbox fatigue set in a few years ago. Even games that I do think are good, Shadow of Mordor, Arkham Knight, I just can't bring myself to keep playing after the first couple of hours. With Horizon? 45 hours in before I even knew it, and more than happy to start a second playthrough. The world is so stunningly beautiful, the wildlife in mechanised form so realistic and engaging to interact with, and just the mystery of the world, exploring the twisted ruins of former cities, rolling green pastures littered with the occasional rusted tank or wind farm, or the exotic lands and settlements of the game's other tribes. I never got bored! Hell, I didn't even use the fast travel function until I'd pretty much revealed the whole map on foot anyway. But above all, it was how engrossed I was in the story that kept me going. Playing as Aloy, a girl outcast from her tribe at birth, you were raised by Ross, another outcast of the Nora, whose care you were put into by the matriarchs of your tribe. Now, why were you made an outcast when you were only a child? Who and where is your mother in a tribe which puts motherhood above everything else? And when the hell can I punch this little shit's head in are just some of the unanswered questions that push Aloy and you forward in the game. In a bid to demand answers from the matriarchs, Rost helps her train for a difficult initiation rite, in which passing will bring her into the tribe, but more importantly, winning can mean any of her questions must be answered by the matriarchs. Good enough story in and of itself, but we've got a whole world map to cover over the next 25 to 50 hours, so here, have some more. Aloy will embark on a quest across snow peaked mountain ranges, arid desert, to track a mysterious cult who want you dead with a seemingly new breed of killer machine at their disposal. There's politicking on the Game of Thronesian level, complete with a dead mad king and a civil war over a holy city. There's a vast menagerie of robotic creatures with origin and purpose unknown, and as the game goes on, there's an increasingly investing and kinda terrifying mystery. And all in all, it's oh so good. 
And on that note, the first thing I have to commend about this game is its main character. Aloy acts as the emotional centre of the game, and thankfully, I actually gave a shit about her. I genuinely wanted to see her succeed. I wanted to see her get all the answers she wanted, to find her mother, to become accepted. No, I didn't expect it, but you can't fault me for hoping. She's shown to be extremely intelligent, if understandably naive to certain things outside her sheltered and primitive upbringing, forced to rethink complex technological jargon of the old world in a way which makes sense in the context of the world she's from. But even then, she's far more worldly and open-minded than all of her kin, probably helped by the fact that she was made outcast at a young age and kinda doesn't buy into their bullshit, which probably actually helped develop her slightly cynical nature. You'll be the one surprised tomorrow, outcast. Not me. Oh, are you going to shut your mouth? Because that would be a surprise. She's sharp-witted, often funny, quick to grasp new ideas, and for the love of God, I really appreciated them avoiding the one almost Disney-esque trope I was expecting to happen. Her falling out with the mentor and running away because you're holding me back! Only to have him die and then her feel really bad or some shit. No, instead her relationship with Ross, despite being a little iffy as a child, grows into one of respect and trust and I loved it. On the eve of her potential acceptance into the tribe, she even promises to keep in contact with him, despite this breaking tribal law. Because, you know, Aloy don't give a f Gameplay in Horizon has a good mix of stealth and combat with the usual you could do it loud or quiet option which is pretty much standard nowadays in every game, but it does mix things up with the inclusion of traps and other gadgets, as well as the ability to override machines, using them to fight for you. Still, stealth is always going to be your go-to option as long as you can, though it's... it's... it's not the best stealth I've seen in the game. What I mean is, I am clearly visible right now guys, come on! Yeah, it can be a little silly sometimes. So long as you're within this red, long grass, you're hidden. Even if half your torso is sticking out and a robot velociraptor is standing right next to you. I kind of decided with myself early on in the game that this grass must mask your heat signature or something, which is why the machines can't see you, but... Come on, dude! Whatever, it's your funeral. So when you're not stabbing bitches in the liver, bows and arrows are going to be the cornerstone of your loadout, acting as pretty versatile weapons with hunting, war and marksman bows, as well as different types of arrows. When it comes to humans, sneaky headshots are fine, but against a Thunderjaw, Tyrannosaur themed walking battleships, you're going to want a more tactical approach, chipping off key components or armour plating to get to that nice soft room to belly oof. And by fucking god, these are the kind of encounters this game is made for. My first battle against this highest tier machine had me yelling to the screen, OH MY GOD I LOVE THIS GAME SO MUCH! The fluidity of the movements, the environmental destruction as it's rampaging through rock and trees, and forget I'm fighting a video game NPC, it feels like an animal. Hydraulics and missile launchers aside, a living, breathing animal. And every one of the game's machines is the same. Animation in general is actually top notch throughout, though it does have moments of... Well, I don't know if it's because outside of the pre-rendered cutscenes, the dialogue sequences used some automated lip-syncing or something, which obviously isn't going to be perfect all the time. But there's... There's something about the way sentences run together. A character's smile will get stuck for a second, or Aloy will keep making the same head movements. I, I don't know. Yeah, it's a nitpick, but it did distract me a few times during dialogue. But nevertheless, you can't take away how good everyone still looks. So. Final thoughts before I start getting a little spoilery? It's awesome, buy it now. So as I've been powering through the last few missions of this game and all the mysteries start to become clear, there's a lot left open to talk about. As I've said, questions like your parentage, the collapse of civilization, and all the other questions raised while you play the game are what drive you through this epic story. But what did everyone want to know at release? Why are there robot dinosaurs? Well, while the eventual answer is satisfying enough and kinda neat idea, it's obvious that the developers started at Robosaurs and were working backwards from there. Whatever, it works, I'll accept it. And it ties into the title. Yeah, I made fun of it at the start of the video, and way before release it was the one thing that I thought was kind of off. Horizon Zero Dawn, what, what the fuck does that even mean? Definitely a case of throw words together and see what sticks. But to my surprise while actually playing the game, Zero Dawn as a thing turns out to be a major plot point. You see, as it turns out, the end of the world was a little worse than expected. As if there's a good kind of end of the world. 
Fallout, maybe. In the mid to late 21st century, a global robotics company, Faro Industries, rolls out a new line of combat machines in a world where militaries are almost entirely automated. There was a little problem, however. Built in to have limited self-manufacturing and run on eco-friendly biofuel, a glitch occurred causing the machines to permanently prioritise replication. This would eventually snowball into an all-out worldwide battle against the machine plague, exponentially devouring organic matter for fuel and building more of themselves in massive mobile factories, a corpse of which could be seen in a mountainside at the start of the game, reading into the various headlines, emails, reports, testimonies and listening to the recordings from back then are actually a little disturbing and of course eventually leads to the true nature of Project Zero Dawn. But the grim and slightly convoluted details are explained in the final few missions, so I'll just leave that there for now. Needless to say though, it is interesting stuff. Horrifying, but interesting. Now there is one thing I want to discuss in this video about the plot and a lot of the themes in general in the game. So I said earlier on that Horizon kind of reminded me of Mass Effect in some places. Not only in the gameplay with the RPG elements, dialogue wheel and occasional moral choices on whether or not to kick this wee cunt smug face in, but actually formulaically speaking, the comparisons kind of smacked me in the face and I, I just want to see if I'm the only person who saw this. Okay, society built on the ruins of an ancient one which came before with a mysterious disappearance that nobody cares to investigate? Check. An ancient threat from killer machines who killed everyone before and might return and kill everyone again? Check. A single scary voice artificial intelligence masterminding the return of killer machines to kill everyone? Check. Scary voiced AI is also a gigantic flying war machine that kinda looks like a squid? Check. Scary voiced AI posing as godlike entity to manipulate the religious beliefs of current world inhabitants? Check. Scary voiced AI using influential and well placed military slash political figure to command the cult followers to bring about the killing of everyone? Check. Military political figure also personal nemesis of the player and at some point holds them by the throat over a cliff? Check and check. Good ancient AI tells you evil AI's plans and how to stop them, check. Skid AI and Kony to control some kind of tower which is key to beginning the everyone killing, check. The kill everyone tower also happens to be right at the seat of government of the current civilization, check. There's a big final battle to keep evil AI from reaching kill tower, check. And optionally the player character is a fiery red haired battle goddess, check. Now I'm not trying to denigrate Horizon at all with this, it's well known Mass Effect shared themes with tons of other sci-fis, that was kind of the point, it was partly meant as a homage to classic sci-fis, and of all things for me to even passingly criticise Horizon for, sharing themes one of the greatest video games of all time? Eh, you could be doing worse for yourself. As for the climax as a whole, the as to be expected final battle, bringing in various characters you've met and helped along your journey, is certainly visually fucking fantastic as a sequence. However, honestly, it doesn't really amount to much more beyond a shooting gallery, using albeit one of the funnest weapons of the game. A little less so after the third, fourth, fifth wave of machines, but eh. Once again though, Horizon does fall back on annoyingly using the same typical end game tropes, including a giant beam in the sky, and a final boss who was kinda disappointingly just a hardened version of the usual Deathbringer we'd fought before in the game. To be honest, as much as I was dreading the prospect, I was expecting to fight a giant squid robot, but no, his CPU was just kinda plucked out and dragged there by his robo-buddies. Kinda, yeah. The climax then I'd say was underwhelming, for such a tense build up to the potential end of all life on Earth. Not to beat the comparison into the ground, but I kinda got a big Mass Effect 3 finale vibe from the final mission. Not just the chaos and warfare going on, but the, I don't know, very structured feel to it. Pass this shooting gallery, run through this impressive looking vista of destruction, battle a wave of the same enemies you have throughout the game but this time in an arena environment and that's a wrap. Whatever, at least there was no star child. Well. But right when you thought the game was going to end with a throne room a new hope style, we thank god have a slightly better ending, which to me anyway, gave a more satisfying, bittersweet finale to Aloy's original story of wanting to find her mother. You know, before the whole Stop the Robot Apocalypse thing happened. And yeah, I actually loved it. In the way that I love to feel depressed as hell after finishing a video game, kinda loved it. I don't want to spoil it just in case anyone who is watching this spoiler section, for some reason, hasn't played the game yet, but god damn it. Anyway, I think I've talked about this game more than enough. I seriously enjoyed it. Yes, it has a few issues, a few bugs, it lends a lot from other games, in both gameplay mechanics and formula of the plot, but it remained hugely satisfying to see through to the end, final boss being a bit shit and all, but really it was the journey more than the destination for this one. The gradual unravelling of the mysteries of this fascinating world and your place in it, seeing all these things and places for the first time. Final words really are that, unless of course you have an aversion to open world RPGs or 
redheads? I can't recommend Zero Dawn highly enough. For me, it's highly likely it's going to be my game of the year, but it's early days yet and we'll see what else 2017 brings. I'm about to start playing Mass Effect Andromeda, but the internet's kind of made me unsure about that. Thanks. But regardless, Horizon's going to stick with me for a long time, it's just one of those gaming experiences. I'd like to see a sequel and given both the reception of this game and the fact that they kinda maybe set something up at the end, I guess I'd be okay with that. Whether it continues Aloy's story or explores some other aspects of the world, I'd be happy either way. I kinda feel on the one hand Aloy's character arc's kinda completely wrapped up and there doesn't really need to be a continuation and it wrapped up in such a good way at the end, but whatever, I'm not gonna speculate. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching and yeah. Give this game a go if you haven't, or if you have played it already, let me know what your thoughts were on it. Whether I do more videos like this or not in the future entirely depends on whether the game compels me to talk about it in this more in-depth way. But either way, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all there. And goddamn, I love it how I got a cold right as I started working on this video. That was cool. Thanks, world. Robo Dinosaurs! Ironically enough, the kind of machine apocalypse in Horizon is exactly why the Reapers had to be made in the first place, just on a smaller scale. Yeah, how about we kill off the humans before they develop self-replicating AI capable of consuming all organic life in the galaxy? Silly organics.